of um, Ekiti State, the chairman of Governors Forum, has said so many inconsistent and misleading uh, things, and I, I just up until now, I, I felt I should restrain myself from joining issues with him. But it has come to the point where I should speak about the Paris Club and London Club refunds and the issues surrounding it. I have a prepared speech here. I, I wish I didn't have to read it. I wish I could just talk to you extempore because this is some, these are the facts that I know very well. But I, I, I'm going to try and read from it as much as possible. And then copies will be made available to you afterwards. Title is International Press Conference by Ned Mwoko, consultant to states and local governments on the reforms of excess charges and over reductions on foreign loans, especially on Paris slash London Club debt exit. I am compelled to embark on this public engagement to debunk the litany of lies. They are lies, litany of lies spins and false narratives that have been dished out to abuse the minds of the public by the chairman of Governor's Forum, Governor Kayode Fayemi. Against the payment of consultancy fees legitimately earned and owed by my firm, sorry, owed to my firm for services rendered and which the states and local governments have fully been refunded. Please take note of that. States and local governments have been fully refunded. So why is it a problem for them to, for fire me to stop making noise about what is owed to me? And by the way, I'm just speaking about Ned Moko and Linus. I'm not holding brief for any other person. The outstanding fees owed my firm with regards to last work done, last work done, which means that there will be work before for the state is approximately $68 million and not 418 as maliciously sought to be conveyed by Fire Me and Co. Our original claims calculated based on agreed terms was well in excess of $300 million. We offered huge discounts on the tournament to accept this sum of $68 million. I must say here that for the purpose of clarity, this particular work relates to work done for states. The work done for local governments was done under my company, Linus International Limited. The promissory notes that you read, you've read about so many times has nothing to do with Linus International Limited. Not one naira, not one dollar promissory note has been given to Linus International Limited. There is uh, still an outstanding amount to Linus 
for work done in relation to local governments. That has been discussed with federal government, and I'll come to that later. But first of all, let me go into some background for those of you who might be uh, new to who I am. I had my first degrees in law at the University of Kiel and at my master's at University of uh, London, King's College, University of London. I was first called to the bar as a member of Lincoln's Inn. From there, I requalified as a solicitor of the Supreme Court, and I worked as a solicitor for many years until I returned to Nigeria in 1999. Sometime in 2003, a World Bank official on a visit to Nigeria had claimed that Nigeria's external debt was $35 billion. Some of you who were around, I'm sure, would have remembered that this particular uh, news headline, Nigeria's debt profile was $35 billion. But a few days later, the then Vice President, Atiku Abaka, countered the assertion and stated that Nigeria was owing $25 billion. There's a lot of difference between 35 and 25. It was at this point that I also coincidentally had a, a, a meeting with uh, Governor Boni Haruna and some other governors who told me that they were overburdened by the monthly deductions from the, the monthly allocations in the name of servicing foreign loans. The governors were mainly, I mean, uh, Adamawa, Taraba, Niger State, Abia, and Ondo States. So they were the first states to engage me. But because of the complexities of the management of these loans and the near absence of proper documentation locally, I decided to focus first on the old Gongola state, comprising of Adamawa and Taraba states. And so I engaged various experts chartered accountants, forensic accountants, inquiry agents, lawyers in UK. The initial efforts were focused on individual loans. So with my team and extensive instructions from Adamawa and Taraba states, we were able to reconstruct the repayment scenarios of all the loans that had been taken out by the old Gongola state. We had no doubt from the conclusions that what we saw from Adam and Taraba's um, work was something that was similar with all the other states across the country. So armed with the report from Adama and Taraba, I met with Abbasanjo, who was president then. I met with him and his economic advisors and gave him the report of uh, our efforts. And basically, I told Abbasanjo that what had to be done at that time was one that the federal government must exit from Paris and London clubs. Two, that they must stop further deductions from various allocations to the states. And thirdly, that they must 
start the process of refunding the states. Mr. President, as then he was, was gracious and he set up a committee comprising of two members each from DMO, Accountant General's Office, Revenue, Mobilization and Fiscal Commission, Ministry of Justice, Ministry of Finance, CBN, my team, of course, as well as from Adamawa and Taraba states. The committee was chaired by DMO. The committee's report after three months confirmed my initial findings that the loans had been overpaid and that states were indeed overburdened with excess and further charges and over deductions. In fact, as, as, you, as you all know, subsequently, federal government took steps to exit from the Paris and London Club loans. I doubt if that would have happened, if not for my report, if not for my advice at that point. Of course, the federal government didn't just exit from the foreign loans. The federal government also, through the orders of Obasanjo, stopped further deductions from the states. You can imagine before then, a state that was getting about $5 billion a month, uh, Naira a month, they had over $2 billion deducted in the name of servicing foreign loans. So with this, with what happened, state had more money, more money to spend, to pay salaries, to do whatever they are meant to do. Um, so we, we, should, we must give credit to President Abbasanjo for what uh, he did. And because of the re reforms, and let me say this clearly, the initial reforms were in respect of specific loans. There were specific loans undertaken by states to build roads or to build uh, carpet industries or to build hospitals or whatever it was. So the reforms that were made initially to the states were in connection with specific loans. Of course, as I said, when, when federal government eventually exited from the uh, Paris and London club loans, the, you are aware that the sum of $12 billion was paid in full and final payment with a debt buyback of $18 billion. I am aware that these are probably not the kind of details that you need, but it's important for you to understand my work the sequence of my work from the beginning. So reforms were made to states and local governments because, by the way, local governments didn't borrow any money. They never borrowed any money whatsoever. But at some point, federal government stopped making reforms. Some of the reforms were made under Gulo Jonathan and um, Yaragua, by the way. But with time, what I did was to go around the country and got the instruction of individual local governments directly from them, not from Algon. Of course, Algon gave me the the uh, introduction later to go to all these uh, local governments. By the time we had done with the instructions from local governments, we commenced an action against federal government for the refund of the 
amount that we had come up with has been wrongful deductions in respect of the money that is for the local governments. This came to about $3.1 billion. Local governments, some of them received this money, some of them did not. Simply because, um, as a matter of fact, only five states in the country, only five states in the country accounted to the local governments for all the money. This was all, all the refunds. Uh, this was a uh, Quara State, Bauchi State, Delta State, Ondo State, and one other state. Is it Ondo? Uh, no, not Edo. Yes. Um, no. Uh, so, most of the states should change the local government, including Ekiti State. In fact, I have a, a statement by one of the chairmen of Ekiti State. <coughs> this is a signed statement by a local government chairman that said that a lady, by the way, ex-chairman Fajui, he said that she signed for 100 million naira allocation, but just a one-off, not that this was the, the only amount they received, but she signed for 100 million allocation, but Fayemi only gave him, or gave her 7 million. This is exactly what they do with local government funds. This was what they did, some of the states did with the local government funds that I worked for. Um, so as I said, I was engaged directly by local government. I was also engaged directly by by the state government. It was much later that um, our, uh, NGF wrote to us that we should also carry on with a class action on behalf of all the states. At the time of the chairman of NGF that we're talking about now was a uh, Yari. Governor Yari. Governor Yari and I and my lawyers met and discussed at various times. As a matter of fact, Governor Yari and the governors were, were looking for bailouts at this time. They were looking for bailouts. And so when we met with him, we told him, look, we had commenced action on behalf of the states in 2014. We had also gotten judgment against federal government in 2013 for reforms to local governments. Yari was happy that we had given him information so instead of them asking for bailout from federal government that they could easily get this money from federal government. Which, this was how the whole thing started. Yari was giving all our documents, all our reports, all the figures. States were to be refunded $10 billion. Um, Local governments were to be refunded $3.1 billion. The bottom line is that these reforms were eventually made in full to both the states and local governments. The issues has been, what about my fees? 
why wouldn't they pay my fees? Of course, Yari, at some point, agreed that they should make some payments to us, which they did. Well, that was from the first tranche. Let me just go back to the um, text of the this conference here. I'm, I'm jumping to paragraph 15. You have it later, please. What I said, eventually, federal government bought into the idea and the reforms commenced in 2016. The federal government refunded both the states as well as local governments based on the efforts of Linus International in suit number FHC slash ABJ stroke CS stroke 130 2013 and Nedmoko suits FHC slash ABJ stroke CS stroke 512 stroke 2014. So please understand that there are two different litigations, one for local governments and the other for states. And there is nobody in Nigeria that will tell you that they commence any actions on behalf of the states or local governments by this time. I'm talking about 2013 that we actually, by then we had gotten judgment. Federal government in the reforms paid to various accounts provided by the state governments um, also provided accounts to receive the refunds accruable to local governments. So the governors not only provided their own accounts, they also provided accounts that they wanted the money meant for local government to be paid into. So the first tranche of reforms to states and local governments by the federal government was wrongly paid to NGF. This is how the whole problem started. Money meant for consultants was paid to NGF. This was $86 million and 19 billion naira. Whilst we're laboring to secure the reforms for the benefit of state and local government, Governor Yari developed a parallel scheme to misappropriate the consultancy fees. As recent as 2016, NGF in a letter to the General of the Federation dated uh, 22nd of uh, June 2016 claimed it had just appointed a consultant. We have this letter where Yari, in 2016, is claiming that they have just appointed a consultant to do what I have been doing all these years. During an altercation on one occasion, during the uh, meeting, with the uh, with the Yari, he confronted uh, me ab about the uh, my fees. But what he, what he told me was shocking. He told me that he couldn't pay me that that money was diverted because it was needed for elections in Bauchi, Ekiti, and Ondo elections. The same fire me. I'm sure you're all aware of what happened that uh, EFCC became involved and it was established that some of the money found their ways to some members of or some leadership of National Assembly. EFCC was able to clamp down and recover some of this money funneled away by NGF. Most of these frauds are still subject of investigations as well as 
civil and criminal litigations, including our own action against NGF and the federal government in suit number FHC ABJ 148. It is important to state that the various state governments at some point issued written instructions to the Federal Ministry of Finance authorizing it to deduct at source and pay to NGF 5% of the sum due to legal fees. But you ask yourself, what legal fees? We have that document here. Every state, including Fireme of a kitty, authorized federal government to deduct 5% and pay for the legal fees. And as I've told you, there was no other lawyer. There was no other, account, uh, no other consultant involved in these matters. And um, This, this payment to the to NGF as authorized by all the governors. But all the governors wrote the letter. So you ask yourself, so why are they fighting against payment of those fees? If they had all written authorizing deductions of 5% of whatever refunds was coming to them. There's no state that didn't get at least about 20 billion Naira of reforms, including the state. None, no state. We'll come to that, yeah. But in addition to that particular um, uh, letter by the governors, NGF also issued an indemnity that should, should I go after them for my money, that they will hold federal, um, the governor's forum liable for my fees. I'm sure you've had fire me claiming that there was no such indemnity. Of course, we have the indemnity here issued by Governor Yari in favor of federal government. As I said, the letter by the state government signed by Fayemi is here. Sorry? Just can you just check that later, please? It's here. So after several efforts to get NGF to honor the agreement with us and pay our fees, we had to commence a different a new suit. In this suit, we joined Attorney General of the Federation, Attorney General of the Federation, CBN, EFCC, and the two non NGF banks. But NGF, being the principal defendant, agreed to settle. So terms of settlements were agreed and signed. I signed for myself, whilst my lead counsel witnessed. Governor Yari signed for NGF, witnessed by Okaro, the DG of uh, Governor's Forum. In accordance with the resolution of the documents filed in court, they adopted the parties adopted the terms of settlement as a consent judgment. Of course, you've had 
Yari said, uh, uh, not Yari, um, uh, Fire Minister, said that there was no consent judgment. Of course, there's a consent judgment. In the consent judgment, there was a letter of no objection for payment of legal fees to Linus International. There was also an undertaking by federal government that they will deduct whatever fees is due to me and direct CBN to pay me directly. But this was never done. An omission on their part, I don't know, but it was never done. At some point, the state governments on their own set up a committee of governors to act on their behalf to review the issues of the various consultants. Because at, at this point, some of the state governors had begun to appoint their own local consultants to receive their own money and you know whatever, whatever that followed suit. But as I said, it's on record that only Ned Moko, solicitors, and Linus International went to courts on behalf of state and local governments. Nobody else did. Anybody else that was appointed was just used as a front to help themselves. So at this meeting, we had a Rotimi Akedulu of uh, Ondo. We had a Dakwambu, we had a Wike, we had uh, Abubaka, Lalong, and Tambua. Well, basically, they resolved that they will pay us. And I mean, it is obvious from the foregoing that the federal government is at the center of the reforms and the claims by the consultants, hence the inevitable role by federal government functionaries, like the Attorney General, uh, that appear, appears to be speaking on behalf of um, the consultants. What he is basically doing is to ensure that governors respect agreements, that the governors respect judgments. But governors, especially, uh, fire me feel that he is uh, above the laws of Nigeria. As a matter of fact, At some point, federal government approved my second bill for Linus International. And please understand that Linus International money has nothing to do with the 418. This is, this is nothing absolutely to do with Linus. In, 20, in 2018, Federal government agreed with me that they will pay me an amount that I will accept in full and final settlement. I, after meeting with my lawyers, agreed, okay, we'll accept this. So Mr. President approved the payment of $350 million, which was to represent 20% of what local governments received. Understand that without me, no reforms would have come to states. No reforms would have come to local governments. This money was there, but they didn't know about it. So when you hear of this amount, you think, oh my, it's a huge amount. Of course, it's a huge amount. But it's something that is relative to what I did. So when I agreed to accept what they proposed to me in full and final payment, 2018, I signed a document that I was accepting that in full and final payment, not knowing that the governors were waiting 
by the corner to ambush me again. Governor represented by Yari. Yari, I was invited to another meeting where Yari said that governors must have half of my fees. We had issues. We had a discussion. We had a heated arguments, and I told him that this particular money has nothing to do with states. This is local government money that I worked for, and local governments have been paid in full. But we had a series of meetings at the Ministry of, of uh, Justice, and Yari insisted that it is either I agree to share the money with him, 50-50, or they would take steps, he would take steps to involve all the state assemblies and they would frustrate the payment. As a matter of fact, he threatened to write to a counter general, to tell the counter general, and I have that letter. Where he wrote that a counter general said that they should pay him half of that money and then the balance should be warehoused with the counter general's office. And then he would get all the state assemblies, the speakers, to come and talk about this. I mean, just imagine, I've been waiting for years for this money, and here was the governor, who is the almighty chairman of a governor's forum, telling me that he's gonna frustrate the payment unless I agreed. So I told the attorney general and other members of uh, the ministry that I've never had to face anything like this in my life. Let me repeat again, we are talking about my work for local governments for which they have been refunded in full. The court judgment upon which they acted said they should pay my fees at source. They didn't do that. Now that I've had a president who is gracious enough to approve the payment, part of it, the governors came again and said, look, we must have this half of the money. After going back and forth, Ministry of Justice said they have they found a solution. That they will not give the governors the half of it they are asking about. But let me put figures to, to what I'm talking about so that you understand. What was approved was 350 million in full and final payment, which I agreed. I signed that I agree. Yes. What's, what they received was 3.1 billion dollars following the judgment. Federal government paid them. But Minister of Justice said, okay, you know, what they will do is they will recommend that they pay to the governors, to NGF specifically, through Yari, they will pay $100 million to NGF. On condition that they return the document that I signed in full and final payment. Otherwise, it would have been manifestly unfair that I had signed an agreement to receive that amount in full and final payment, and somebody is coming behind me to share in it by force. So, Minister of Justice agreed that they will return the document that I signed in full and final payment, which they did eventually, meaning that I'm now entitled to full my full money. money. Secondly, they said that they will get Yari to provide an indemnity to the federal government in the event that I 
sue federal government for the balance. As a matter of fact, on one occasion, I was the Minister of Justice. Yari came in. We were just discussing the indemnity. When they gave Yari the indemnity that the federal government had drafted, you know what he did? He took it and he tore it. He tore it. He was angry and he was speaking outside. He didn't understand outside. And uh, he put his hand in his pocket and brought out another document. He said, look, he has, he has his own indemnity. Because the indemnity that was given to him to read said, if has to do with me. The indemnity which he brought by himself just talks about consultants. So these are some of the issues that one has faced with governors. You can see, fire me, even claiming that the indemnity that you are resigned is not binding on NGF. So an agreement signed by a president of a country is not binding when another president comes in. Or an agreement signed by, uh, I don't know, this is just not something that one is used to where an establishment, an institution like uh, NGF will claim that a document signed by a former chairman is no longer a, a valid because they can say whatever they like, they can do whatever they like. They are the, uh, they, 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 they are the problems of Nigeria. People like fire me. So, <coughs> let me just try and complete this. Um, so from the foregoing, certain issues stand out. Number one, reforms to state did not start with this federal government. Two, in 2013, when judgment was entered in suit number 130, the presumptuary led government was not in power. Does the current NGF chairman know the sum of $86 million and $19 billion uh, fee was paid to NGF? Of course he does. But he'll pretend he doesn't know. The agreements and contracts in issue were agreed before the Attorney General assumed office. The various court judgments were secured before the Attorney General assumed office. This, the, the, the final part of this is what I've titled The Many Lies of Governor Fayemi and Misleading Information and Impressions Created by Him to Nigerians. It is false to state that the NGF did not act or represent the state governors over the current round of reforms to the state. As I told you, we met with Yari, we gave him all the documents, we got the approval, they began to do the reforms. Everything was organized and discussed with NGF. So why would Yari say that they're not bound by by, sorry, um, Fire Minister, that they were not bound by what agreements we had with the uh, NGF. It is also false that past regimes refused to pay the consultative fees. Reforms started under Obasanjo's regime. We received some money as far back as Obasanjo's regime and Yaredwa's regime and Good Luck Jonathan's regime. But I'm sure you've heard Governor Fayemi say that no reforms were made until he became the almighty uh, governor of uh, Ekiti. The, uh, governor Fayemi also lied when he said that there was no order for mandemos against the Federal Minister of Finance and Attorney General. Of course, 
I got an order of mandamus dated 21st of July 2021 at the Federal High Court compelling Federal Minister of Finance, DMO, DG, and the Attorney General to pay the full value of the promissory notes with regards to the uh, 618, uh, sorry, uh, 418, which you all um, uh, hear about. But let me also have tried to explain to you that there is no amount called 418. What they've just done is wrongly calculate everybody and say, but, but one thing that they do, which is mischievous on the part of FireMe and some of the media people, is that every time they talk about this, they put my picture, they put the picture of Attorney General, they put the picture of FireMe. But when you go to the body of the write-ups, they have never said that Ned Moko did anything wrong. They have never said that Linus International did anything wrong. If they have said so, please show it to me. In fact, in their desperation, what they did at some point was to get Falana to commence an action against Linus. That was last year. He commenced an action against Linus. The action, according to Falana, his prayers, was to set aside judgment of 2013. Judgment that has already been fully implemented by federal government. They have refunded local, local governments, the full money. Of course, they know that the governor, some, most of them, apart from those five I mentioned to you, they know that the governors, most of them diverted this money. And yet, Falana went to court on their behalf to set aside a judgment of 2013 in, in I mean, of course he, he knows he, he was gonna lose and he lost. He lost. The court, Justice Echo, or Justice uh, Soho. So, 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 so. Yeah, just so, so that this is this is an abuse of court process. How could somebody who knows that a judgment of 2013 has been fully, fully implemented? They paid part of my fees, just only part left. left. All, the, all they were trying to do was just to have a reason or a basis to avoid paying whatever is outstanding to me. That is disingenuous. That is dishonesty. This is what Governor Fayemi is doing as chairman of Governor's Forum. As if that wasn't enough. When they lost, they got all the attorney generals of the Federation to also commence another action. This time also including Linus, including Nedmoko, and a host of others. In their claim, the Federal government shouldn't deduct the money from the account to meet up the obligations of the under the promissory notes. I'm sure you're aware of what happened. They also lost. I have no case against me by NGF or anybody who said I've done anything wrong. But I have judgments against NGF, against the Attorney Generals of the, of the Federation. As a matter of fact, let me say this, because I, I also know Attorney Generals. I know some of them. They were never consulted. Governors were not consulted. Governor Fayemi is doing exactly what he wants to do using the name of NGF and lying to Nigerians. You know, one, 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 one problem with this kind of attitude is this. Just like you have a, a what do you call this, a group, um, the university, 
strikers? Aso. Aso is on strike. Aso is representing those they are representing. You can imagine now it's a, a, an agreement with Aso. By the federal government, they sign it. Then maybe two years' time, under Aso comes, the chairman or president, I don't know what they call them, will say, no, the agreement they had with a, a government is not binding on them. Or some other members of some other university people from other states will say, no, we are not bound by whatever Aso. We're going to go on a, that's what, I mean, there, there must be a collective responsibility at some point. Whether it's NUJ for you guys, or uh, NMA, or MBA, or NGF. Because throughout the time we worked for this money, after the exit from Paris and London Club, NGF was in charge of discussions. When money came, they were the ones who got in touch with the governors to bring the accounts where this money was going to be sent to. The money was, it was sent to them. They spent the money. As a matter of fact, a few days ago, Gordon Wicke acknowledged that uh, it was the governor's money from a uh, Paris yes, Club sir. refund that he, he used for, I'm sure you, you, you guys heard when he, when he said that, uh, uh, when uh, somebody went to commission a project. Huh? Speaker. Well, speak, yeah. He said it was a Paris, Paris, Paris Club payment. I also want to say that, uh, of course, Fire Minister, that there was no indemnity given by NGF. That's a lie. There is. Fire me, I'm sure in the last few days or weeks, you, you heard him say that uh, there was a Supreme Court judgment against us. There's no Supreme Court judgment against me. You could ask him to show you a Supreme Court judgment. He just says things he wants to say because he feels that nobody is going to challenge him. So I'm challenging him. to show Nigerians a Supreme Court judgment against Nedmoko or against Linas. None. If there's any, I undertake to forgo my fees, as I'm talking to you now. I, for, I, I undertake to forgo my fees. There's any judgment of Supreme Court in favor of NGF or governors, because there's none. He lied. There's been three EFCC reports in this matter. There's been a DSS report in this matter. Governor Fire may say that uh, EFCC is not technically capable of understanding the issues. So only Fire is technically capable of understanding issues. Only Fire me. I have the reports of the EFCC, the, the three of them. If you could say that about EFCC, then there's something wrong with him. Who else is charged with the duty of looking into any matter of this nature? That was why the Attorney General, in fact, it was the Attorney General who actually wrote to EFCC to investigate the claims. The claims. It was also the Attorney General who wrote to DSS for further investigation. Well, let me, let me, um, let me just briefly go back to the, to the beginning. Something I, I didn't say that I, I ought to have said. When I was engaged by Adamawa State and uh, Tareba and Niger States, 
They are, all the governors and their team came to my office in London. All my experts met with them. We went to courts. We went to court in London, we went to court in Austria, in, Austria, in um, Geneva, Geneva in, in France, wherever the lenders were. As a matter of fact, Peter B also came to my office in London. He instructed me along with the South Eastern governors and he got the reforms at that time. Just like the other states did. At some point, the British government said they were not going to disclose some information to me because if they did, that it would cause problems between Nigeria and Britain because the information I was asking for would show that British, that uh, most of the money that we're talking about have been repaid. And secondly, that the deductions that were being made by federal government on account of states were not sent to them. Um, yes, this is from the British government, ECGD. This is Export Credit Guarantee Department. They took over the loans from the banks. They, they bought over the loans. You know? So they, they said that if they disclose, he said, we also take the view that disclosure of the information with full consult, without full consultation with the Nigerian uh, federal government, will likely to prejudice relations between the U, uh, UK and Nigerian government. So, but that didn't stop the UK government from making an order for full disclosure. UK government, the courts, the court in UK still ordered for full disclosure and so they gave us the information that we needed and that was why we were able to put together the history of all the loans and we were able to reconstruct them to show how much the states borrowed, how much they are paid and how much they have overpaid by. All this was done because we went to court in London. With that, we were able to go to other jurisdictions. As a matter of fact, in one of the matters in uh, Austria, some of you here who are probably from, I don't know anybody who are from Adamawa State? Anybody from Adamawa State? What, uh, this, this, what, oh, Gungala, but this is very important. Adamawa Taraba. According to uh, federal government uh, records, Old Gungola borrowed money to build Yola International Hotel in Austria. Adamawa. Yola International Hotel. When we went to court in, London, in uh, Austria, they said, no, we didn't lend any money to Gungola State. We didn't lend money to any, anybody. And I mean, these are part of the discrepancies that we discovered because of the work that I did. But instead of being commended, fire me and go. And I'm, I'm holding him responsible because he's the only one who is talking. Nobody else has said any stupid thing like fire me. If fire me has anything that I've done that is untoward, he should put it out there. He should start using my name or through his media to use my name to publicize or to get his uh, the members of the public worked up on 418 or whatever they, they, they call it. You know. So um, I mean I, I know, yeah, I've said it all before, you know. Well, I, I, let, let me say it, you know. Uh, maybe you guys should be asking Fayemi what he did with the reforms to, to his state. What did Fayemi do with over 25 billion naira sent to his state, equity state? You know? Was it 
Yeah. But let me also repeat something I said before, which is that, where's my phone? Where's my phone? Okay, see, sorry. Which is that only five states, only five states ensure that the money go to local governments. Um, yeah, it is not one of them. Um, uh, let me just, uh, railway, sorry. I thought I sent to you. The, the, the states where local governments got their full value uh, as follows. Of course, FCT. Local governments got their money because nobody was there to, to, to uh, in, in, in interfere with it. Uh, Delta State, local governments got their money in full. Bauchi State, Benue State, Kwara State, and Ondo State. These are the only governors that made sure that money that I recovered got through to the local governments. The others, you should ask them what they did with it. So that is basically it. I am um, sorry that I came late, and I'm sorry that I've not read in accordance with the prepared text. But there will be copies of this made available to all of you. Agree? It will frustrate it. Will frustrate it. That's not a deal. Fine. Since uh, uh, Governor Fire mentioned the chairman of Nigeria Governor's Forum, have you had? one-on-one -on -one interaction with him over this matter? I have never met with him. I, I have, I've never discussed this matter with him. Fire me. I've never, but say he, his posture has been very antagonistic. His posture generally has been antagonistic. You know, we, we just put, put out my name there along with others. And I felt so insulted. I have no reason to, to meet with him. I always tell him we'll meet in court. And we'll be meeting in court and I've been winning. I have, because I, it, it will be the same story. I'm sure you read what George Ubo said about, uh, about uh, Fire Me and, and why, why Fire Me sued, went to court against George Ubo for uh, defamation. But let me just briefly tell you even about how, how stupid some of these governors can be. Let me just tell you. Many years ago, I was in my office when I had a letter from George Ubo. You all know George Ubo. Panic alert. He wrote to me that he has been instructed by governors to investigate my work. And I said, George, on what basis will you, who are you to? He said, in fact, one of the governors spoke to me then that uh, if I don't allow him to investigate my work, that they will not support my payment. So I agreed. I agreed. George Ubaud did that over two months or so. He came up with a report. His conclusion was very straightforward. He said, Lina should be paid its full fees. Jody Boss report is here. He said that so one or two other people should not be paid because they've not worked, they don't do, they've not done anything. But you know that Jody Boss fee for the work that they asked him to do is also being contested by the governors. <laughs> <laughs> They now say that they want George Ubo's fee to be also be investigated by another <laughs> auditor. <laughs> so the, the auditing the auditor, the guy that came to audit me that I queried, and so they brought that upon themselves, didn't it? They brought George Ubo's fees upon themselves because there was no reason to audit me. But I, I reluctantly agree, agreed to be audited by George Ubo, and now they say they don't want to pay George Ubo. <laughs> So you understand the issues. So, final question. Uh, so Jojibo is not a consultant. Uh, for them, he is an investigator. But they still class him as a consultant, consultant for the, um, Paris Club Refunds. He's not a consultant to, to, he's a consultant to NGF, appointed by NGF. This is, this is Jojibo's report. Yeah. <laughs>
I need to follow you with the, the right population in this river mm -hmm. um, for clarity, so that because you mentioned a lot of years, you will not want to misrepresent anything. In total, how much are the governors? I'm talking of local governments and the states. On, how much is everything? On this last work that I did, I told you that I went to court in 2014 on behalf of states. We got a judgment before then on behalf of local governments. So everything was $13 billion. $13 billion on this leg, last leg of work done for states and local governments. For local government. But if you go back to 20, uh, 2005, everything is about $20 billion. Dollars. Sorry? Yes, yeah, some of them said 10 percent, some of them said 15 percent. So it depends on the states. I was in, engaged individually by different states. Some states 10 percent. We try to aggregate it at some point. Okay. But but local government was just one, which was 20 percent. And yeah, go on. Um, when Lord Fayulu was talking after the meeting the other day, he said that um, they don't feel like. Uh, uh, they should pay because the matter is subjudicial. Uh -huh. mm. I wish to clarify. Is there a, uh, a matter for the court that is? What is what is subjudice? You know, uh, for me, it's abusing court processes. It's, it's a, he has become what they call a, a vexatious litigant. For me, it's a vexatious litigant. Um, as far as I know, there are there are no. Uh, pending uh, executions, stay of executions, none. As I, I told you, they, they went to, they took uh, liners to court, at the high court, they lost. They went to another court, they, they, they also lost. Um, they went to high court, as far as I know, uh, they, they appealed to, uh, high, uh, to the, sorry, court of appeal, that matter is there, but it's, you don't say it's subject is on appeal because there has to be, ought to be an, a stay of execution, but there is none. Can I, can I pull like that? Yes. Please, can I explain? Should you give a dialogue? Talk 